what's up guys Kyle here again uh, continuing the SCX 200 build so this is gonna be the beta flight and uh, be a heli section of the the videos um, not sure how quite how long this video is gonna be but what this is gonna consist of um, I'm going to flash the DYS board that I have installed into the SCX 100 um, I'm gonna do a complete setup and then I will move to BL heli um, go ahead and set the ESC's up and then proceed back to beta flight to do finishing uh, configurations. So the first thing we are going to do is you're going to go ahead and plug your quad in and what you're going to do is there's going to be a button right above the USB port. You're going to go ahead and push that and go ahead and plug in. All right, you'll hear it chime and then you'll see DFUC right up here in the corner. So now what we're going to do is go to the firmware flasher. And once it loads, we're going to select the DYS F4 is a Omnibus F4 board. And then we are going to select 3.1.6. Um, 3.1.7 is out. Um, I've been hearing some issues with SBUS and some boards locking out. So I'm going to go ahead and just use uh, 6. Um, we are going to do a no boot, or no boot sequence and then also a full chip erase. So we can go ahead and load the firmware. Give it a second to load. And then go ahead and hit flash. And then we'll see it erasing. And then it should continue to the flashing. And then we'll actually reboot up into the comic. Sweet, and there were no issues. It loaded up the COM port, so now we can go ahead and click connect. Um, what we're going to do is we'll be able to see the quad move. Um, we're going to go to ports. Uh, if we if you use the S bus port um, on the board, then you're going to be able to select Art One. Click save and reboot. Now we're going to go to configuration. Um, I'm running this on D-Shot, so I'm going to go ahead and select D-Shot 600. Um, I don't run with the accelerometer. What the accelerometer does is it allows you the ability to have modes, so angle mode and horizon mode. Um, I don't use it. It takes away CPU load um, when I turn it off, so then I can jump to 8K for my PID loop frequencies. Um, and then I'm going to come down here, turn off black box. I'm not using it. Um, and then go ahead and turn on the current meter. Um, and what the current meter does is that allows you to see uh, amperage draw and the milliamp draw um, in your OSD. And then same thing with the battery voltage. If you want to see your battery voltage, you'll have to have this battery, um, the BVAT, on as well. Uh, and then click save and reboot. All right, not really going to mess with anything in here yet. This is all going to be personal preferences. Um, some people might raise or lower each one of these values. Uh, the only thing I am going to do is change my rates to something I'm more comfortable with and then give it a little bit of expo uh, just to soften up the sticks a little bit. So then we're going to click save, double click it just to make sure. Then we're going to go to the receivers tab and change the channel mapping, which draws me back to something I already forgot. You need to go to the configuration tab. And depending on the receiver you picked, you're going to go ahead and click serial based receiver in the configuration tab and then change it to a Spectrum 2048 is what I am using. And go ahead and save and, and reboot. So I'm just double check that that stuff stayed. Yes, it did. 
So let me come to the receiver tab. Um, I don't have my controller on, but if I did and I were moving the sticks, at this point, all of these values would be moving back and forth. Um, a nice ground of a, uh, about a thousand, roughly. Uh, you could go a little bit lower or a little bit higher than a thousand, but then a height of uh, two thousand, um, which I will add a little section of how to do this in your controller as well. But you want to do that for all of the roll, pitch, yaw, and throttle values. Um, and then the only other two switches, if you have them set up, that should be moving are auxiliary one and two, which if you flip them, you will see them moving here as well. Um, go to the modes. Uh, what we're going to do is add an arm switch and a beeper. Um, this is where you would set up other things like uh, angle mode and horizon mode and then air mode um, as well which I'm going to switch my beeper to beeper or to auxiliary 2 um, so and if you're not running air mode all the time you will want to set it up on a switch which it's right here um, I'm actually going to kick back to the configurations tab and permanently put it on just go ahead and flip that save it Go ahead, reconnect. So, and that should all still be here. And then now we're going to go to OSD. Uh, that's one of the coolest things about this board is it does have built-in OSD, uh, which means we can go in here and have things pop up for us um, on our screen while we're flying. So, and I like to use just the battery voltage, my flight time, current draw and then just the milliamp draw kind of lets me know how my quads flying um, and just simple things like that but other than that we can go ahead and save and this is what our OSD will roughly look like which you can do font manager you can do RSSI alarms and things like this um, I don't have any of this stuff on my quad so I don't really mess with it and then on top of that you could change PA PAL or NTSC it doesn't really matter I'd run auto just in case you switch cameras um, then you don't have to switch anything uh, you could switch to metric or empirical um, as well so and then that's pretty much this so now we're gonna hop over to BL Heli and do stuff in that and get the ESCs all set up All right, so in BL Heli, we're going to connect. You also need a battery for this. Oops. So go ahead and connect the battery. And then hit read setup. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to flash all. Click the newest version of the RCD shot commands and go ahead and flash it. Kind of adjust your beep strength a little bit. Uh, you can play with the delay time. That'll tell you after so many minutes of inactivity how long they'll start beeping. Um, this can help you find things if you don't have beepers. Uh, I don't really, you can play with these and see what these things do. That's just a precaution. They shut off after 140 degrees. Um, so then just watch the flash. All right. So, and then with D-Shot, the other thing you're going to do is you're going to set your ppm limits so what you're going to do is you're going to do move this to a thousand and this one to two thousand that's going to be your end your top and your bottom um the only other thing you're going to do is click normal and reverse that's going to just correspond to whichever motor uh you know one two three or four and then whether or not they're running the, the right direction um this changes sometimes based on esc brand or even firmware um depending on which firmware you're using 
so that can be different. Right now, it's you know one's normal, two is reverse, and three is reverse, and then four is going to be normal. Uh, so you might have to check and play around. But once you're done, you click right setup. If you don't click it, it won't change anything. Um, but so now that that's done, I can click disconnect. You'll hear them chime. All right. So and then I can close. And go back to Betaflight and go ahead and connect. Go to motors, ensure this, plug your battery back in. And then ensure that your motors are spinning properly. And now you're pretty much ready to put props on and try and fly it. Marshmallow.